Welcome to uh, my first devlog for this particular game. I'm calling Gun Run. Um, the title might change a bit in the future, but let's get right into it. Um, so I've been working on this game since uh, probably April. I forget. It might have been March. Uh, and what you're seeing in this video, this first clip, is basic functionality working. You know, I have some wheel colliders that are turning, and it's using it basically using the Unity tutorial to figure this all out and get it working. I literally have a cube attached to a bunch of wheels with a rigid body and some colliders. Um, as we got further into this uh, project, I encountered a couple issues where, first of all, Unity's, Unity's tutorials are not, they don't practice software engineering at all. So things like encapsulation, polymorphism, um, inheritance in object-oriented programming and design, they aren't utilized with Unity at all. So I eventually set about um, taking this project, encapsulating the wheel colliders into a class and their representations as a mesh into another part of the class. And these all derived from a single, uh, what's the word? Base class. It's abstract in this case because, in my project, because I found that it was the most useful way to do it. That way it can't be instantiated and it uh, serves as a very basic class for the rest of the game. At least anything that need, that's part of the vehicle. I have not implemented sound. That's something I've been putting off for ages because I don't know anything about sound. <laughs> I love sound, I love music, I love sound effects, but I just don't know how to like make that just yet. I downloaded some sounds on the internet, but I just haven't been able to... It's just too interesting for me to develop a functionality and to worry about sound. Also, things like FMOD are freaking expensive. Um, so what you're seeing in this part of the video is uh, uh, I'm demonstrating the use of the sway bars. Um, in case you're unfamiliar with the vehicle components, uh, in reality, there's this thing called anti-roll bar or sway bar. And what it does is applies opposite, opposite force from the direction of turning while you're driving a vehicle. And this um, keeps your vehicle wheels on the road and prevents a rollover like you've seen in some of the earlier videos. That's why I'm able to do this crazy turn at a high rate of speed. Um, and also, the, some of these models I made honestly look like they were born with extra chromosomes. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but I just think it's funny. Um, I don't know what I was thinking when I made them. I guess as I assume that's kind of like a truck. In later videos, you'll see I modeled a full-on F-150, Ford F-150. Um, I think I did a pretty good job with it. Um, but, where's it going with this? I had some uh, interesting issues with units. So um, when I started this, I wasn't really familiar with power or uh, torque values or units for those. And at some point during this, I think it was about a month ago, today is October 17, 2021, I had um, realized that units were very important and I had horsepower and uh, things like that. And I, wasn't sure how to convert between engine speed to torque. It turns out you need a power component and you need uh, what's your thing? torque to, to achieve that. So throughout this project, I have managed to figure out what I was saying. Um, so I have a whole class dedicated to unit conversion. It's called uh, I think it's called unit unit. Unit, unit utilities and uh, it does things like convert engine speed to torque or torque to engine speed or power to engine uh, speed things like that um, just a little bit of uh, important information so like when I implemented the transmission in the engine I had to take engine speed from the engine from the engine because in a, re real, in a real vehicle you have an engine which turns a crankshaft which is connected to the transmission via either if it's a manual it's connected to be a clutch if it's automatic, it's connected to be a, a, a torque converter and a flywheel. And uh, a torque converter is this little propeller thing that's encased in a, a like it kind of looks like a donut, but it doesn't have a, an empty center. Okay, it's connected via that, and that allows the engine uh, to spin freely while the um, transmission is in park or whatever. So when you're in park, you're not pulling away as you uh, um, idle, right? So uh, Anyway, the, the, the gearbox, the transmission is meant is meant is meant to take the engine speed 
and change it to a certain torque value, different torque values for different engine speeds, right? The actual vehicle speeds and engine speeds. It's like the, it's the diff, it's, it's the connection between the wheels and the engine to the road, right? So for lower speeds, um, like vehicle speeds, you end up with, um, you end up with, at lower vehicle speeds, you end up with um, a lower torque value. I forget the difference, but um, hold on. Allow me to consult my uh, little thought manual here. <laughs> I'm so nervous about doing these videos. If I remember very properly, the higher the torque value, the smaller the engine speed that you get. Or the higher the engine speed you get, the lower the torque value you get. So the graph tends to taper off for higher engine speeds, right? So, which is why we have things like high end torque and low end torque. Low end torque is, um, I have this, I hope I don't have this inverted, but low end torque, you have more torque for lower engine speeds than you have for higher torque. So, you get a good going started, getting started uh, acceleration versus when you're um, racing or on, a, on the interstate, you want a higher, what am I saying? When you're racing, you want a lower, low end torque, higher low end torque because you have good, good acceleration taken off, right? With a higher high end torque, higher high end torque, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. You end up with um, higher top speed and it, it just it tapers off a little bit slower. So that's very important on operation of the vehicle. Uh, in this particular simulation I did not implement vehicle slip or and vehicle slip, wheel slip. So um if you wanted to have it on ice or slippery conditions, that's something you'd have to implement yourself in the GitHub repo, extend it yourself. Um, I wanted to do that, and then I was looking into recent some research paper about um, papers about how to implement that type of thing, and I was like, I, this is just way beyond me. <laughs> um, I understand the math to some degree; it just doesn't work for me. I had trouble implementing it. Um, yeah, that's been the project this far. Um, in the future, I might uh, add some sound. Uh, I don't know. I kind of got bored with it towards the end. It's just implementing different components is kind of boring. Uh, I like to see new things happen, you know? So, um, anyway, um, I think I'm going to make this devlog thing a, a, a thing. You know, I'll try and upload as, po as much as possible. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to see more things like this, subscribe, hit the like button. Maybe hit that bell button so that you always get notifications when I upload something. Um, as for that, I hope to see you next time. Yeah.